A group rallies for children in the Commonwealth, the issues they're pushing lawmakers to consider. The U.S. House has passed a bill to keep ISIS from using social media to recruit. Kentucky Congressman Hal Rogers talks to us about the legislation. The top seven candidates in the Republican primary square off in another debate tonight. Look at the issues they are expected to address. This is WKYT News at 430. Good afternoon to you, Amber Philpott and Sam Dick reporting. Children account. That was the message hundreds of people wanted to send to lawmakers today at the Kentucky State Capitol. The group gathered for a rally on behalf of children to push for legal changes. WKYT's Michelle Chamberlain shows us what they want done in our top story at 430. Politics, a stage where opinions are often divided. But at today's rally here at the Capitol, there was one topic showcased that all Kentucky politicians could agree upon, making our state a better place for kids. <laughs> Hundreds gathered in the Capitol's rotunda today fighting for the kids of Kentucky. Advocates urged decision makers to push for changes and make kids a priority in the upcoming legislative session. One of the things we're excited about is that folks who disagree on the day of the week seem to come together when it comes to kids. Executive Director of Kentucky Youth Advocates Terry Brooks said there's one issue in the state he hopes changes soon. He is challenging lawmakers to look at the way public school employees are hired. Brooks says teachers, principals, and school workers undergo background checks, but those hiring aren't required to check if that future employee is on the state's child abuse registry. That is just nonsensical. Uh, so, you know, as I was telling you, I want to make sure that all five of my grandkids are in schools where every coach, every teacher, every teaching assistant has been checked. We hear from the governor, from the Senate, and from the House, like, what are you saying? We're going to do something about that. Governor Matt Bevin and First Lady were planning to attend today's rally, but unfortunately, they were in Louisville to attend a funeral. In Frankfurt, Michelle Chamberlain, WKYT. Advocates for children are also proposing a statewide smoke-free law to protect children and pregnant women. A man injured in an overnight crash has died. It happened just after midnight on New Circle Road near the Alumni Drive exit. The Fayette County Coroner's Office has identified the victim as 32-year-old Christopher Ray Lane. He was thrown from his car and died at UK Hospital. Police say it appears he just lost control. Initial investigation leads us to believe he was traveling on the outer loop of New Circle, lost control, somehow flips over the center median and landed in the inner loop lanes. The inner lanes of New Circle Road were temporarily shut down following that crash. A Lexington home has been temporarily condemned after a car crashed into it. The hit and run happened just before 5 this morning on Boiling Springs Drive off Leestown Road. Police caught up to the driver on Main Street. They think he had a diabetic emergency and didn't know what happened. Police say he's not facing any charges. As the Islamic State continues to claim deadly attacks around the world, lawmakers on Capitol Hill are looking to combat the growing influence of terrorist groups on the web. WKYT's Washington correspondent Peter Zampa talked to Kentucky Congressman Hal Rogers about a bill that could help. The Combat Terrorist Use of Social Media Act passed through the House in December, but is still awaiting a vote in the Senate. The bill passed with massive bipartisan support as groups like ISIS continue to use social media to garner support and plan attacks. When you find out that your mortal enemy is utilizing an avenue to do you in and to kill you, uh, you better pay attention. Congressman Rogers says this bill should have been passed years ago. Former CIA operative and computer science major Congressman Will Hurd says ISIS's unprecedented use of social media is only growing stronger. When one account closes, another opens up. This increases their surface area of attack. Congressman Rogers says he understands that this method of combating terrorism is difficult when the internet is supposed to be a forum for the free exchange of ideas. It's going to be tough to come up with a, a, a way to protect your privacy while we get at the people who are utilizing the social media for you know, bad things. The bill requires the president, among other things, to analyze the effectiveness of terrorist social media and train law enforcement to combat the practice in the United States and abroad. If they're trying to incite folks here in the United States of America and they're trying to engage in contact with folks in the United States of America, that gives us an opportunity to engage with them and figure out who their recruiters are. 
The bill is currently sitting in the Senate Committee on Homeland Security and Governmental Affairs. It's expected to be voted on in the coming weeks. Reported in Washington, Peter Zampa, WKYT. The KFC Yum Center in Louisville will debut some new security measures tonight. People attending Louisville's game against Pittsburgh must pass through metal detectors. This will now be the normal procedure at every event there. A Louisville television station reports it costs $200,000 to install the detectors at the Yum Center's 28 entrances. Fayette County schools are hiring three new high school principals in the coming months. Henry Clay is one school looking for new leadership. This comes after a sudden transfer of former principal Greg Quinnen in December. Quinnen left Henry Clay to become the curriculum and instruction coach at Winburn Middle School. Not much was said as to why, so our investigative team filed an open records request for documents about that transfer. Our Miranda Combs is with Amber now in the newsroom to tell us more about her story coming up on WKYT News at 6. Amber? Sam, thank you. Miranda, it was a lot of questions that we started getting from parents that first prompted you to look into this, right? Right, and when we started looking at the emails, there were parents questioning the superintendent about a lot of things that were going on in the school. Most importantly, this class called Awaken 101. Mm -hmm. We first heard about this course being offered, I think it was last summer. Mm -hmm. And we first heard about it because parents and students were concerned that, the, that a credit was taken away. When we opened up the documents, we found out that he was told, the principal was told not only one, once, but twice that this class was not worthy of a credit to begin with. The, the site-based council just didn't feel that it was worthy. But he still gave the credit and then had to take it back. And he says in emails how remorseful he is about giving that credit in the first place. And if he was going to give it, he had to be, you know, man enough basically to, to, to take it back mm -hmm. as well. So on top of that class, then there also have been these questions surrounding the actual teacher that he hired to teach it. He hired a teacher very quickly at the beginning of this this school year, and questions came up about that. And questions also came up about the way he's paid. And we'll talk more about that coming up at six. All very right. interesting. A lot of questions. We need a lot of answers, mm -hmm. Miranda. Thank you, Sam. Thank you, Amber. A state Senate committee has approved a bill to crack down on chronic drunk drivers. Under the current law, drunk drivers face enhanced penalties for second and third DUI convictions in five years. This bill would expand the window to 10 years. A similar bill did not make it through last year's General Assembly. With most of the country focused on Iowa and New Hampshire, GOP presidential hopefuls are shifting their attention to South Carolina. The state could play a big role in determining the Republican nominee. Weijia Jiang is in North Charleston, South Carolina, where a debate between the top seven candidates will be held tonight. Republican presidential hopefuls have a lot at stake when they take the stage for tonight's debate in South Carolina. Now that we are so close to Iowa and then New Hampshire and then we move south, to South Carolina, though these debates become even more critical. Dr. Scott Buchanan is a political expert on voters in the Palmetto State. He says candidates should focus on one group tonight. In South Carolina, the Republican primary, about 60% of the voters are evangelical Christians. Trump has lagged behind Ted Cruz and Marco Rubio with evangelical voters, but take a look at this map. It shows the most searched candidates on Google in the past week, and every candidate is assigned a different color. You'd be right if you guessed Trump's color is red. Mr. Trump is number one by far nationally. Katrina Pearson is the national spokeswoman for the Trump campaign. She says South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley was wrong to call out Trump this week when she said Republicans need to resist the urge to listen to angry voices. Frankly, if you're looking around and not angry, then something's wrong. There are several things going on in this country that are just astonishing many people, including new people, which is why you see Mr. Trump's rallies grow. Tonight's debate cast is the smallest one yet, with Jeb Bush, Chris Christie, John Kasich, and Ben Carson trying to catch up to the front runners. Weijia Jang, CBS News, North Charleston, South Carolina. The latest CBS News poll shows Donald Trump with a big lead in the Palmetto State at 38 percent, followed by Ted Cruz with 23 percent and Marco Rubio at 12 percent. Nominations for the Oscars were announced this morning. We'll tell you who's up for the big awards next. 
Suffs Furniture and Oriental Rugs is having a fantastic holiday sale. Come in and shop and save on great furniture. Save up to $500 on selected Lazy Boy recliners. Now only $392. Save $1,000 off Sealy Queen sets. Now only $799. Save an additional 25% off all Tipperpedic floor models. This sale is so big, even Vito is helping to get ready for this fantastic holiday sale at Suffs Furniture and Oriental Rugs. What do these women have in common? They are the staff of Ageless Medical Weight Loss. They've lost a combined 1,300 pounds. The team at Ageless will understand your struggles and celebrate your victories. For a medically supervised, affordable weight loss solution, call Ageless today for a free consultation. A home is the largest investment most families make. It's important to choose a contractor with the knowledge and experience to guide you through the home building process. From selecting the right lot to selecting the finishes that make your home unique. M.A. Conley Construction is by your side from beginning to end. Our experience brings value to every home we complete. M.A. Conley Construction, a Madison County family serving all of Central Kentucky. The candidate from Cartown Kia can give people $8,000 off new Kia Optimus. What can you offer? Well, we have yesterday's coffee. <laughs> There's no debate. Get $8,000 off MSRP on all select new 2015 Kia Optimas in stock at Car Town Kia. Take home a new 2016 Kia Sorento SUV for only $189 per month. And if you have a job bringing home $350 per week, we want to approve your credit. We can do credit. We don't do credit. Don't debate it. Get to Car Town Kia. Hi, I'm Mark Krish of Coit Cleaning and Restoration. Almost 50 years ago, we pioneered the drapery and carpet cleaning business. With our certified technicians, innovative cleaning methods, and your satisfaction guaranteed in writing, Coit continues to deliver exceptional customer service. For a limited time, choose from any of our cleaning services and save up to 35% off. That's right, 35% off. Is it any wonder why so many homes in the Lexington area have one thing in common, a Coit van in the driveway? Call 1-800-4-COIT today. Everyone is singing praises about essential oils and trying to make their home free of toxic chemicals. Get the facts yourself and learn how Young Living Essential Oils can help support your family's health and well-being. Visit JustOneDrop.com for more information and local classes. Now, your hour-by-hour -hour forecast with Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey. Told you today was going to be a winner of a day, and it even exceeded my expectations. Thermometers well into the mid and upper 50s, and we've been pointing this day saying get outside and soak this one up because it's going to change in a big way over the next few days. Live sky cam, plenty of sunshine out there this afternoon. Those temperatures again well into the 50s, even a 60 into parts of Bowling Green now. 55 for the good folks in Mount Sterling and Moorhead. If you're out tomorrow, umbrellas are going to come in handy. It's not going to rain all day. We'll see a chance for a shower starting early in the morning across the western parts of the area. Everybody has a chance by noon as temperatures make a run toward 50 with some light rains that will take us into the heart of the afternoon as well. And by late afternoon, temperatures start to go in reverse. Quiet on the Defender Radar Network. Rain moisture coming in from the deep south, not going to officially hook up with this cold front that is crossing the area by tomorrow night. A lot of winds out ahead of that, cold air coming in behind it. As we focus on the breakdown now for the possibility of more winter weather, I'm not talking about anything major in terms of snows with this. Some light snows, flurries are out on Saturday, temperatures in the low 30s. Sunday, especially late in the day, I'm pushing the timing of that front back until the evening and overnight now on Sunday with an Arctic boundary that slides in here, snow showers, very windy. We could pick up some light accumulations with that and cause some travel issues Sunday night into Monday morning when temperatures by Monday morning may flirt with zero into parts of the area. Gusty winds will make it feel a lot colder than that. Here is the flow early next week coming right off the North Pole through Canada across the northern tier of the United States and look at where those wind streamlines are aimed right toward Kentucky. And as a matter of fact, that cold air is going to go all the way into the deep south and the Gulf of Mexico. Not as cold as what we're talking about here. While we make a run toward zero, areas across the northern tier of the country may be minus 10, 20, 25 below zero. You know what? They tell us that's not supposed to happen when a strong El Nino is ongoing. This is not your typical El Nino. Weather-wise, hour-by-hour forecast. We go through the evening and through tomorrow morning. Clouds are going to continue to thicken up. Quickly, 
Rains will come in from southwest to northeast. So by the afternoon, even as temperatures warm a little bit, we're going to have to dodge a few drops. And that'll carry us into Friday evening as the temperatures start to drop too. A lot of clouds around on Saturday, low level moisture, snow showers, flurries of the light variety will be with us during that time as well. And as we go into our Sunday now, we're calm for most of the day. Then winds are going to gust up, and here comes that Arctic front with a band of snow as we go into late Sunday into Sunday night. And what comes in behind that continues to be a very cold shot of air for Sunday night through Tuesday. Single digits appear to be a given. Can we get to zero? Maybe a little below? We'll have to wait and see about that one, but at least we have a chance as of now. Today just beautiful, yeah. sort of a gift to us in the middle it, of all it of this. It really was, yeah. If you had today off, and you're, uh, that's kind of like hitting the lottery. Even if you didn't, huh? just being able to, to run from your car to store to store good and point, not be bundled good up is good, good enough. Thank you, sir. The Oscar nominations are out, and Leonardo DiCaprio's latest, The Revenant, leads the pack with 12 nominations. Jeremy Roth takes a look at the other nominees, surprises, and snubs. Could this be the year Leonardo DiCaprio walks away with an Oscar? Leonardo DiCaprio in The Revenant? His movie The Revenant got 12 nominations this morning, including a Best Actor nod. DiCaprio has yet to win an Oscar despite four other nominations. I want them back! They're my property! Mad Max Fury Road is up for 10 Oscars, including Best Director, Production Design, and Best Picture. Speaking of Best Picture, the nominees in that category also include The Big Short, Bridge of Spies, Brooklyn, The Revenant, Room, Spotlight, and The Martian. The star of that movie, Matt Damon, is up for Best Actor, his fourth nomination. Aside from DiCaprio, he's up against Brian Cranston, Michael Fassbender, and Eddie Redmayne in that category. The film Carol got nominations for both Best Actress, Kate Blanchett, and Best Supporting Actress, Rooney Mara. Jennifer Lawrence is up for her fourth Best Actress nomination. She won it in 2013. In addition to Kate Blanchett, she's up against Brie Larson, Charlotte Rampling, and Saoirse Ronan. The Force. It's calling to you. One of the biggest movies in history came away with five nominations. Star Wars The Force Awakens is nominated for Best Editing, Sound, Visual Effects, and that classic John Williams score. You can see who will take home an Oscar when Chris Rock hosts the 88th Annual Academy Awards on Sunday, February 28th. I'm Jeremy Roth, reporting. Real Broadway stars coupled with some local talent this weekend for Concert with the Stars. I'm Deanne Stevens out and about at the Lexington Opera House today. New tonight. Leonard, get ready for an apology. Are you in a forgiving mood? Can this wait? I'm afraid it can't. I have more apologies to make. Then catch Sheldon Cooper's Apology Tour 2016. I hope it's as much fun as the Sheldon Cooper Spell Checks Local Menus Tour. Now with real emotions. I feel terrible. <laughs> wait, I can do that better. I feel terrible. Yeah, wow, I don't know which one I like more. Miss it and you'll never forgive yourself. I suppose I should apologize again. Oh. A new Big Bang CBS Tonight or stream it live or on demand. I'm Alex Trebek. If you're age 50 to 85, I have an important message about security. Write down the number on your screen so you can call when I finish. The lock I want to talk to you about isn't the one on your door. This is a lock for your life insurance, a rate lock that guarantees your rate can never go up at any time for any reason. But be careful. Many policies you see do not have one. But you can get a lifetime rate lock through the Colonial Pen Program. Call this number to learn more. This plan was designed with a rate lock for people on a fixed income who want affordable life insurance that's simple to get. Coverage options for just $9.95 a month, less than 35 cents a day. Act now and your rate will be locked in for life. It will never increase. Guaranteed. This is lifelong coverage that can never be canceled as long as you pay your premiums. Guaranteed. And your acceptance is guaranteed with no health questions. You cannot be turned down because of your health. Call for your information kit and read about this rate lock for yourself. You'll also get a free gift with great information. Both are free with no obligation. Don't miss out. Call for information, then decide. Read about the 30-day 100% money-back guarantee. Don't wait. Call this number now. Call 1-800-440-4200 for your free information and a free gift. There's no obligation. That's 1-800-440-4200. Or visit us online at colonialpen.com. 
That number again is 1-800-440-4200. 1-800-440-4200. Call now. As a HealthMart pharmacist, I'm committed to helping you and your wallet stay healthy. He helped us understand our Medicare Part D insurance, saving us money for more date nights. My prescription savings all go to this guy. Medicare drug plans can change every year. Ask your local Health Mart pharmacist how you can save money and stay healthy. To find a locally owned Health Mart, visit HealthMart.com. Health Mart, caring for you and about you. Get WKYT news and weather updates on News Radio 630 WLAP. Alan Rickman, best known as Professor Snape in the Harry Potter films, has died. Rickman's family says he died after a battle with cancer. His film career included Die Hard, Love Actually, and the Harry Potter films in which he played the ambiguous dark arts teacher. The British actor was 69 years old. Several tributes have been planned for late musician David Bowie. He died of cancer on Sunday. He will appear on the cover of the next issue of Entertainment Weekly. There are also plans for a tribute concert at Carnegie Hall. And tickets for his Broadway show, Lazarus, have been selling for nearly $2,000 each on StubHub. A former Backstreet Boy is facing charges for a fight outside a bar. Police in Key West, Florida say Nick Carter grabbed a bouncer by the throat after the bar refused to serve him and a friend. Police say the friend headbutted another employee. Both men are charged with a misdemeanor battery charge. Well, from Broadway to the bluegrass top notch, Broadway stars will perform alongside some up and coming local talents in Lexington this weekend. Our Deanne Stevens is out and about with a preview of Concert with the Stars. Oh, yeah, that's way too fancy, Brock. I was thinking of more like. I don't even, I'm not even hitting the right. The entertainer. <laughs> the entertainer years ago. Entertainment Plus is happening here this weekend for Concert with the Stars. I promise I'm not playing the piano. I will not attempt to do that. Brock Terry is with us, music director for Concert with the Stars. You guys have some magnificent talent headed here this weekend. We really do. And I tell you what, Lindy and Jeremy, they just give me more and more opportunities every time they ask me to come and work with them. It's really great. So all these Broadway folks coming to Lexington. I never get to work with people like that, well, so it's, it's, it's very, amazing. It's exciting, I'm sure, Brock, and it's also very exciting for you're a local guy, very talented, and you're working with some local talent uh, like Virginia here, SCAPA graduate. Virginia, talk about your opportunity to be here with the Broadway stars this weekend. Oh, I mean, it's just so amazing. I'm so excited to get here on Saturday and just soak in everything they have to teach us just from performing next to them and forever grateful to Lindy and Jeremy for the experience. So. Okay, what are we going to hear now? A little bit of Watch What Happens from Newsies, Virginia's going to sing. And I'm going to let you play the piano, Brock. <laughs> This weekend for concert with the stars as well as some Broadway stars. Who are they, Lindy? That's right, Jenny Barber. You know, might know her from Wicked. We have Aaron Dilly, Stephen Arbuntrock, and Kyle Dean Massey from ABC's Nashville, but also a Broadway guy from Next to Normal, Pippin, and Wicked. Wow! How do folks get tickets? Uh, two three 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 five three five or LexingtonTheaterCompany.org. All right, check it out. Concert with the stars. I'm Deanne Stevens. Come on, let's see what you got. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're so much better than me. <laughs> That's me playing, by the way. Back to you guys. <laughs> All right, Dan, at least you're trying, I guess. This dog has gone viral online. The facial expressions he can make is gaining a lot of attention ahead. And just take a look at this. Their cancer patients are really special people. They're determined, they're tough, and they're such wonderful people to care for. 
it's really great to offer patients the standard of care, but then we have trials so that we can also give them the cutting edge, where we explain to the patient this is the standard, but this might be even better. Because of the excellent work we do, we've received an outstanding award from the Commission on Cancer. I'm Dr. Hain, and we treat every one of our patients like family at Baptist Health. The Lazy Boy Inventory Overstock Sell-Off is going on now. Five million dollars of national inventory. Factory Direct Overstocks will be sold at rock-bottom prices to make room for new merchandise. Markdowns on a huge selection of recliners, sofas, sectionals, chairs, tables, and more. Financing is available. This furniture at these prices won't last long. The Inventory Overstock Sell-Off. Don't miss it. Lazy Boy Furniture Galleries. Live life comfortably. This is a Morgan & Morgan consumer alert. You may be entitled to $1,500 for each and every unwanted call made to your cell phone in the last four years. Companies collecting student loans, mortgages, or any other type of consumer debt must respect your privacy. It's time to fight back against these robo-bullies. Call us to see if you're entitled by law to $1,500 per call. By law. Morgan & Morgan, for the people, dot com. The flu virus, it's a really big deal. And with fever, aches, and chills, mom knows it needs a big solution, an antiviral. Don't kid around with the flu. Call your doctor within the first 48 hours of symptoms and ask about prescription Tamiflu. Attack the flu virus at its source with Tamiflu, an antiviral that helps stop it from spreading in the body. Tamiflu in liquid form is FDA approved to treat the flu in people two weeks of age and older whose flu symptoms started within the last two days. Before taking Tamiflu, tell your doctor if you're pregnant, nursing, have serious health conditions, or take other medicines. If you develop an allergic reaction, a severe rash, or signs of unusual behavior, stop taking Tamiflu and call your doctor immediately. Children and adolescents in particular may be at an increased risk of seizures, confusion, or abnormal behavior. The most common side effects are mild to moderate nausea and vomiting. Anti-flu? Go antiviral with Tamiflu. What a really nice treat. Today yes. was sort of in the middle of all this crazy weather we've been having. In the spirit of the day, I had my car washed. I, thought, <laughs> I don't know if it's going to rain the next couple of days. I'm going to listen to this guy about that. But I thought, what the heck? I'll go, go ahead and wash it. the car. So, Chris, did I make a mistake? You know what? I'm going to let Mother Nature do my car wash tomorrow. Yeah. Ah, yeah, I hate to rain on your parade. But, yeah, we got rain coming in tomorrow. Then we're going to throw a little more salt back on the roads this weekend and early next week. Current temperatures, though, concentrate on the positive for a change. 50s across the entire area, 54 into Florence, 55 popular Lexington, Frankfurt, and into the Mountain Parkway corridor. Everybody with mainly clear skies, sun getting ready to call it quits for the day. That mild southwesterly flow continues to be noted across the entire area. Once we go into the weekend, we're going to really change it up. Those changes start tomorrow, guys. When I come back in a few minutes, a new hour-by-hour -hour forecast shows another big temperature plunge before the weekend is over. Okay, well, a dog with a viral expression and a, what is that? Carsicle? Thawed. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's a video that will have you talking. Yeah. Take a look at this. A dog nearly broke the internet this week after a video <laughs> went great. viral. The video first surfaced yesterday after an animal shelter employee noticed the dog's <laughs> ability to smile on command. The rescued pup certainly has plenty to smile about. The animal shelter says he is going up for adoption soon. At last check, the camera loving pooches, pearly whites oh, have been viewed more than 12 million times on Facebook. That smile right there is going to get that dog snatched up pretty quickly yeah, by a new owner. Yeah, that is something else. <laughs> Scraping ice from the windshield. Shield can oh. be annoying. Oh my goodness. At least you didn't have to deal with this. A snowstorm in upstate New York turned this car into a car sickle. Now I know why they call it a car sickle. <laughs> High winds caused the lake area, uh, area surf to drench it and then it froze in all the cold weather. A tow company had to use 350 pounds of calcium chloride to free the car. Oh. The car was parked in a store parking lot, so its removal became a bit of an attraction. Talk about needing to go to the car wash. <laughs> I there, know. Right? Mm. All right, cracking open a cold one is taking on a new meaning in Green Bay. Kemp's Dairy Plant in Cedarburg, Wisconsin, started bottling green milk this week to celebrate the Green Bay Packers postseason run. The Packers Power Pint, which is a limited edition green vanilla flavored milk, hit store shelves yesterday. Fans say it tastes like eggnog.
Hmm. hmm. I'm a Packer fan, but yeah. I don't know that I'm going to do green milk. I'm not a milk I'm fan, not a milk period. Yeah, I'm so not either. I'll let you try it. There All you right. go. Maybe on St. Patrick's <laughs> Day. Much more to come now at 5 o'clock on WKYT.